Okay, I think we're up, are we? Let's see, 8 o'clock. Drop right up zero, we're up. Good morning, guys. Monday, Monday, the end of my week here. Oh, ho. Oh. Got the door open, it's a tiny bit chilly, but it's okay, not so bad. Bit of help here. It'll be a, I don't know, a cloudy day, I think, not quite sure. <coughs> we're now in the third day of that 10 day holiday. And the weather is really not cooperating. It's okay some days, it's drizzly some days, it's dreary some days. Today it's mixed, I think, here in Tokyo. The last couple of days of the Heisei era now. Papers out, yes, thank you. Thanks for the reminder always. Every now and then you do catch me. The paper is out this morning for Suga-san. She's working this today on one of the prints in our Mystique of the Japanese print series. It's a set that I made myself uh, 10 odd years ago. And we've been reprinting them here for subscriptions from Moko Hong Kong. And she's at print number 15, which is the most difficult one in the set and she's been really struggling with, with some points of it. But, uh, She's the only printer who'll be here today, I think. Ishikawa-san, who you've seen the last couple of days, won't be here today. She's now gone for the, uh, her family is somewhere. I think spending some time uh, at Golden Week together. So. And Ei-chan is back at Hong Kong at the moment. So printing upstairs today is just a good sign. Shop, I don't know. It's been up and down, you know, because of the Golden Week holiday, there's many, many, many more Japanese customers than there normally are. Which is mixed news for us, you know. I know they're here for parties, but uh, in general, most of the Japanese customers aren't, uh, they don't buy that. They don't buy things. And there's very, very few Japanese people here who are interested in of our work. And we had a bit of a funny experience yesterday. I, I, I say funny, it's funny slash tragic. I mean, I'm laughing as I say this. So because of the Golden Week holiday, there's lots more foot traffic around here in Saxa. And a little coffee shop across the street, which has been on really reduced hours the past few months, has got some extra staff and when they've opened up, they were open all day yesterday, which is what normally what they don't do. And what they did was they put a stand outside with some food on it. It's kind of like, you know, down, down the temple there's festival food stands. Well, the coffee shop yesterday put a stand outside with some food on it. So while we were getting ready in the morning, I wandered over there to see what they were doing. And this was really, really something unusual. They had brought food from their inside kitchen. They weren't cooking outside, but they had brought food and they had a hot plate and a rice cooker and stuff like that. And they were selling two things. One was what they had described on the Japanese menu. They put a menu in Japanese and one in English. The Japanese menu, it said chili con car, some version of chili con carne. And they said it was made with deer meat. And this is sort of not something very typical here, so I asked the guy, deer meat this guy. And he says, yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, whatever. And I asked what's going on. And he said he worked also for a restaurant that does dishes made with game. Is that what you call it? You know, I know animals that are not normal, cows, pigs, whatever, stuff. So okay, no problem. They had uh, they had this this chili with deer meat. They were trying to sell it all day long. I, I actually I tried it for lunch when lunchtime came for me. I went over and bought a cup of it. They were selling it in cups. And by the time I went over for lunch, the sign had changed. And it no longer said deer meat, and that was scratched out with a marker. 
and it was changed to read duck. That's a kind of duck slash goose slash whatever kind of animal. It turned out that he had misunderstood what his boss had told him. He'd got the wrong animal on there. So. <laughs> and it wasn't very good. It was really weak, and you couldn't even tell what kind of meat was in there. It could have been generic. It could have been anything. It was just not, not whatever. So I wasted my 300 yen buying a cup of it. But this second dish on the menu was the one that caused more interest during the day. They were selling a kind of hamburger, and the, the buns were not made with bread. The buns were made with rice. You can make flour out of rice and then make, make buns. And this is not something that there was their innovation. There's a whole chain here, Moss Burger, which specializes in this, selling hamburgers with buns made of, made of uh, rice flour. But what was interesting was the meat they were describing, and they had it described on their English menu as beast hamburgers. And I'm like, I don't know how many customers you're going to expect to get from this, but whatever, beast is not what it is. So I look at the Japanese side, and it says the meat is a mix of deer, the same deer we were talking about for the first time, of deer and horse. On this part of town here in Asakusa, we do see restaurants selling horse meat. It's a thing in Japan. It's sort of in the same kind of genre as whale meat. It's not something that's part of contemporary culture, really. But people did used to eat it, and they're still a bit hungover from, from the old guys who used to eat it. I think some European countries too, right? Does France eat horse meat or Holland? I don't remember exactly which, I'm sorry. There are other countries that eat horse meat. So anyway, there it was. It was deer and horse. And when I saw this, this means something to us as woodblock printmakers. And there's a connection between a combination of deer meat and horse meat with woodblock printmaking. And it's the designer Hiroshige. He changed his name a couple of times during life and designed all kinds of prints in many different genres. And at one point when he was, or he or his publisher, had a particular seal that was carved onto prints that were done to his design. He didn't himself sit there sealing the prints, but his seal pattern was carved onto the woodblocks. And it's now known among people who study this kind of stuff as Hiroshige's Baka seal. And the word baka in Japanese is the word for, well, generally translated as fool or idiot, whatever, baka. And it was a play on words, because ba is this character also used for the pronunciation of the character for horse, and ka is used as part of the pronunciation of the character for deer, shika. And Hiroshige, or his publisher, arranged a seal with an image of a horse and a deer side by side. We've got the thing in our shop. I should I should have got it next to me here so you can see it. We could link to it. If you go to uh, if you go to ukiyoe dot it might be easier to uh, find it here. Just give me a second to find it. If I go to ukiyoe dot org. Excuse me a second, I should have done this before opening up this morning. Search for Hiroshige uh, geese moon. Here it is, bingo, look at that. I found it first first shot. Here we go. There's a link. Somebody probably beat me to it. Here you go, this is a link to a shot. And that's one of Hiroshige's prints. And if you see towards the bottom of that print, there's a seal. The seal image. And whether this is Hiroshige's idea or the publisher's idea, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, you see the back end of a horse, the rear end of a horse, and a deer sitting down. So there is in our world, the printmaking world, the idea of the combination of a deer and a horse. So when I went across the street to this menu, I saw a deer and horse hamburger. I'm like, okay. So I thought it would be fun to show these guys. So I come back to the shop and I grab the print. The same one I showed you there. We have a reproduction. It's a bestseller here. We have a reproduction version of it here. So I grab it and I go across the street to show these guys. I thought this was really cool. Hey, look, there's an ukiyo print by a famous designer, 
that typifies the hamburger you're selling. So if I forget the exact words I used to try and talk to this guy, I assumed a basic level of knowledge, you know. Ukiwe Hanga, I maybe started. Hiroshige, I probably, you know, whatever. And the guy's like, Hiroshige? And he doesn't understand what I'm saying. So I said, you know, a famous Ukiwe designer, Hiroshige Hoksa, these kind of guys. He says, Hoksa? He doesn't understand what I'm talking about. So we backtrack, and I show him the print. I'm like, Ukiwe, Nihon no Dento Takimoka Hanga, the traditional prints of Japan. And he's like, huh? And I realize I'm talking to a guy here. This is a man. He's like 25 years old or something. Not only does he not know who Hiroshige is, he doesn't know who Hokusai is. He doesn't know what a freaking woodblock print is. He's never heard of any of this stuff. And all he sees is this foreigner yelling at him in passable Japanese, talking about something, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, why are you here? Do you want to order a hamburger? <laughs> Okay, I just gave up and came back across the street and blah, 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 blah. And whatever, I was chatting about it with the staff here. <coughs> How could anybody be so, you know, I mean, they teach this a little bit in school. It's in the textbooks and stuff. And like Shiva's on the same, what do you, you don't think boys read textbooks, do you? You know, whatever, and you know. And yeah, and I realized actually there's a, it's because my world is only sub circumscribed. I. I see and deal with people who have some level of interest in these woodblock prints. And yeah, it just driven home to me a little bit that there's most people out there, most people don't have a clue about any of this stuff. So, okay, okay, I'm not actually complaining, it's just, you know, whatever. I, I do get, obviously, have a bit of a distorted viewpoint about this. I assume that it's something that's part of the culture at some level here, but it's not true. There's, obviously, depending on your age group, there are huge numbers of people that don't have a clue about anything to do with this. So, fair enough. So the only baka I involved yesterday was me, so whatever.
いや広重ブルベねどうしたら<笑> 
what kind of mood, you know. Some of you who have been here for a few months, you saw I did some test prints a few months ago that were okay, but not extremely satisfactory. We're going to have to work out how to do this. I had tried to print it with my typical control freak character. I tried to print it too smooth and too clean. And this print isn't a delicate, smooth, clean object. It needs to be something a bit more wild in character, of course. So although I might be the proper person to uh, carve this, I'm not the proper person to probably print it. His voices, you don't hear those very often on a stream, right?
mulling over that idea, we were just playing to see the Baka burger idea, you know. Just idly thinking here. <coughs> if there were some such thing as a cafe or slash restaurant or whatever associated with this place. We've talked about our, our barren cookies and sort of a semi-mythical thing, which hopefully one day will come into existence. But, and this joke about the Baka burger or whatever. But on a semi-serious thought, if there were such a thing as a cafe with an ukiyo-e related theme, what other kind of menu items could, would, should there be? What other food ideas come up when you think about ukiyo-e things? And when somebody said takoyaki, you know, we've got the octopus printer, so that's fine. You know, okay, there's another idea. But what else could be on the menu? in an ukiyo-e or Japanese print or shin hanga or whatever, you know, related stuff. What else could be on the menu? Okay, I think that's another roll down. I think we're down to the bottom of that roll. Okay, which means we pull this back another level. No peel scores here, please. We're just pulling this slightly back one more roll. Exposing another roll. Requirements for restaurants, yes, I guess they're strong. I have no idea, of course. Food food service is something taken very seriously here in Japan. Any restaurant has the permits and, and stuff and the checks every night for cockroaches and whatever. No idea. It's a serious business. Uh, we thought at some point we might be bumping into that. We, we give people coffee here. We do the print parties and we give coffee as part of it. And we asked around, I asked at the, the Shokokai, the Chamber of Commerce, when I was setting up this business about various rules and stuff like that. And when I had mentioned that this, he said, don't put your plan. There's your plan. Come to a print party, Moko Hong Kong, blah, 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 coffee break, we'll serve coffee. Don't mention that. Give them coffee if you want a break, but don't put it in your actual description of the products and services that you offer. Because by doing that, we then become, we're selling drinks, you know, selling coffee, and we're now part of the, you know, the, the restaurant business and stuff, licenses and things like that. So we're not trying to be evil and subvert it here. We just have a coffee machine in the corner. But yeah, on a food service is a different thing here in Japan, and it is absolutely going to be serious. So the, the semi thing we're talking about, a future Mokohangan cafe, it's not something we can do casually, start serving food on the side here. It would be a separate business, licensed, everything totally by itself. So I'm not seriously thinking about this right now, I'm just, you know, collecting ideas for the future. Yeah, Tokaido. <laughs> 53 menu items of the Tokaido. Yeah. <coughs> There are. There's one in the Tokaido itself. There's one of the stations. Is it called Mariko? No, Mamiko. Ma, Mariko. It starts with an M. It's six letters long. It ends with an O. Tokaido. And it's a view of a, a wayside rest stop that sold some specific kind of food. And it has signs. And it's a real thing. It was actual product placement in the Hiroshige Tokaido series. So yes, there is examples of food in the Tokaido set. Mariko. Somebody's got it. Thank you. Salad in Japan, of course there's salad. A couple of nights ago, I went to an Obincho Ogia. It's a, a izakaya near here, a chain izakaya. And they have a, a salad there. I think they call it seven items, nine items. I forget where it is. It's a big bowl full of all kinds of stuff.
Thinking about it, ukiyo-e prints are not big on food, you know, travel, yes, yoshiwara, yes, actors, yes. Food-related stuff doesn't really jump to mind there, yeah. You know, back to apprentice work here, rough outlining these characters first. Each column I rough outline first, get rid of the waste of wood. So that then cutting the letters itself becomes basically trimming almost.
Okay, let's clear out some of the dead wood. Sushi cats, yes, so, so, so. <laughs> Sushi restaurants too, very, very heavily regulated, absolutely. Common sense, you see, fish and stuff. And the restaurant business is a very, very different, different business from what we do. You know. <coughs> We've chatted about this before, I know. When I started up this business here in Asakusa, I was really not sure what kind of uh, licenses I needed, what kind of regulations I had to pay attention to. And then we did our construction of the shop, you know, what kind of inspection and renovation and stuff like this. And uh, as I've mentioned before, I was very shocked, but I'm still fairly shocked about this, to find that our business falls totally between the cracks. We have no business license here. We don't need a business license here. We rented, this private guy, David, rented this space from the woman who owns the building privately. We put prints inside, we open up the front door and say come in and buy prints. Put a sign up. And that's it. There is no licensing, there is no permissions, there is no anything. Anything. Now at the end of the day it's money coming in and I pay taxes on it. I declare the income as my personal income. So we're on the radar as far as you know doing business and stuff like that. And uh, you know we pay Cameron's health insurance and that sort of stuff, you know. But there's no other regulation of what we do. None whatsoever. Some I'm happy with and some I'm not so happy with. And when we built the second floor shop, we looked up on our own affair. We looked up things like uh, regulations for fire department exit signs and stuff like that. And we did that. We put in an exit sign. We rewired a rule for it and stuff like that. Because, I, one, I wanted to do the right thing. And two, at the time we get inspected, I wanted to make sure we were, you know, par, up to code. We've been here now nearly five years. We have never been inspected once by the fire department, by city hall, by inspection agencies, by anything, anybody. And it's not like we're under the radar. We're here, we're physical, we're open, we advertise, you know, we're, we're, we're present. Japan is really funny in that sense. In some ways it's extremely strict, extremely bureaucratic, heavily regulated. And in other senses, it's totally hands off. Would I have been able to do this in New York or Vancouver or, or Toronto or whatever? I don't think so. We renovated the place, ripped the walls out, ripped the wires out, put the new wiring in. And every step of the way we tried to do it proper, you know, as far as we understood code and stuff like that, we tried to do it. A totally proper way. Just still, I'm astonished about that. I still, after all these years, I'm still astonished about that. When I came here in 1986, we rented an apartment and I opened an English school. Put signs up, come here. Enjoy English with Uncle Dave. We put flyers out all around the community. Made a living at it there for three or four years before I became a printmaker. City Hall, couldn't care less. Again, it's not like we're hiding or what we're, you know, we're on TV all the time. T 
TV stations come and expose, broadcast what we're doing. And if there was anybody in City Hall who was thinking, I was, oh my God, there's a business hiding out there. That's not how it works. They just don't care. Okay, here's another row now. Column, row, whatever. Another column of text cleared out. So now we give it a go and do the gentle trimming across each character. How we do this? 8.43. Should be soon time for camera to drop by, I think. Sales tax collection. Yes, we were registered with the tax agency. We pay my personal taxes. We collect sales tax. We remit sales tax. We're doing all the financial stuff as, as normal. Yeah, like Contar says here, I know, I, we've talked about this before, I did the wiring upstairs in our building. I didn't have to hire a contractor. I did it myself, put in an electrical panel, did everything. Wonderful for us. But the downside for me is I realize that I live in a city where woodblock printmakers do electrical wiring in shops. Do I really want to live in that kind of a city? Like Contar says, what's next door? Who knows? So it's plus minus, plus minus.
Time is late. I know it's probably because of the train schedules. Remember, it's Golden Week, so all the trains are on what would normally be a holiday schedule. So although it's a Monday, the trains will be running on a Sunday type schedule. Here he is. So <coughs> they're bad enough here. They're saying Cameron's late, Cameron's yeah. late. I'm just give him a break. It's probably a Sunday schedule, right? The trains yeah, are I was on holiday surprised. schedule. <laughs> oh, you forgot. I forgot. Oh, did you forget? Okay, it is his fault. <laughs> I wasn't sure how you're going to be doing holiday. You've, I'm going to be here. But the you, so you've wrapped up your holidays into a spe separate package. Yeah, since I'm going, going to the US in yeah, yeah, June. Yeah, 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 I'm just <laughs> moving Golden Week yes, a month and, and a half process. later. Take it away, sir. Um, okay. It's been food, food, food today, the conversation. Food. So, oh, I like food. What kind of food are we discussing? Oh, we've got some music. <laughs> <laughs> I was mm -hmm. taking a nap when you called yesterday. <laughs> And I woke up. Oh, sorry about that. I don't, no. We were a bit desperate because yeah. we could not find it, and she was here and she yeah. had to go. Did you, so You did find it. Yeah, it was like Kawaii right Ka right San Fani found it. It was oh. in your room, under your bench, in a box, under another box. Oh. Something else was on top Something of it. Something else got put on top. Yeah, oh, sorry yeah. about that. Because I wrote her name on it hoping this would make it easy to find. No, nope. I... no, nope. no, no, no. No, I'm not blaming you, but just, yeah. you know, I wasn't yeah. sure if it was Something here got or. And... It had to be in one of those two places, but. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, 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 no blame. Just uh, that's why we called you. No, because, yeah, you know, I called back, but I, yeah, whoever answered the phone, phone said, we already found it. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> One of these cameras. All right. Do a new food-related print series, I see. Well, the food conversation, I've got to chat with you about it. I know the restaurant across the street did a, the, the, yeah. the cafe, which is not that we used to eat at for a while. Yes, yeah. that we used to before they closed up. Right. They seem to be open this week. I know. Oh. And they Taking had, a chance on Golden Week. I guess so. And what they had yesterday was an outside food stall. Huh. And I thought it was them, actually, but when I chatted with the guys, no, it was another, it's some restaurant in a Sakusabashi. Oh. They've just made some deal. Interesting. They set up outside during Golden Week. And they had two items on their stall. One item was uh, chili con carne, oh, okay. which they first advertised as being made with deer meat. But oh. when I helped them with their English sign. Yeah. And I went back and it was scratched out, and it turned out it wasn't deer meat. It was uh, dacho. Dacho. Some kind of goose, duck, whatever. Yeah. Huh. Oh, okay. But the other item they had on their menu was sort of more interesting. It's burgers made with. With the buns made with rice flour instead of wheat flour, so oh, okay. we called it a rice burger. Yeah. But the meat was a combo meat, and it was made with the aforementioned deer and horse. It's a oh. deer meat horse meat blend. That does sound interesting. I haven't tried it yet, but whatever. Yeah. I, I wasn't. I tried the chili yesterday. It was very bland. Tasty. Oh, bland. Oh, that's whatever. too bad. But anyway, long story short, we we're chatting about this on the stream this morning yeah. because it was a deer horse meat blend. Yeah. I'm back here, and maybe Shiba-san first brought it up to me. She said, she said that sounds like a Hiroshige burger, because Hiroshige huh. has a seal. Yeah. With, at some point, she used what's called the baka seal. Okay. And it's a picture of a deer and a picture of a horse. Okay. Yeah. That would be baka. Those so are the kanji. You grab it. It's right over there. You know where the nature prints are? The the Tanzakuban higher. Right in front of you there. In the nature, yeah, right yeah. there. There's a geese. So that's it, right there. there it is. Bring it over. Yeah. Yeah, that's. That's so Dave here idea. thinking it was really cool. These guys are making a burger with deer and horse meat. Right. So, so I went across the street the to try and show that to them. And it was a disaster. Really? Well, as I was explaining on the stream already, they didn't understand the word Hiroshige. Oh, no. <laughs> and they didn't understand the word Hokusai. What? They didn't understand Ukiyo-e. They didn't understand the object I was holding in my hand. Were you talking to Japanese Yeah, people? yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just, I just gave up because they were like, who's this foreigner waving this funny stuff at us? And, uh, and it wasn't my language is not that bad. No, you know how to talk with like friends. Whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> so I came back and the, the girls in the and she was saying, say, you don't get it, Dave. There's, these are boys. Like, you no, know, in middle school, there was this standard two-page spread in the textbook showing yeah. Ukiyo-e. Those boys didn't even look at it. They just blundered through school. You know, oh, whatever. man. No, their point was serious, that, that ukiyo is not no longer something that's general that everyone knows. knowledge. Yeah. And I've been thinking it is. It's, quote, general knowledge. Yeah. And it's not 100%. Wow. It's, I don't know what percent it is. But <laughs> I don't know what percent it is anymore. Wow. Interesting. So they were not the slightest bit interested. 
I'm here, I'm thinking, I can save their business. I can put up a big poster. Baka burger. Baka burger, whatever, go for it. And, you know, wait. Ah, so. oh, that is weird. So they're there again today. And what I thought was just for, uh, if they're there again yeah. today, whatever, ask your permission, go ahead, take a picture of it, yeah. and then bring it back and blog for ourselves. Yes. Hey, there's a restaurant across the street. They're selling what they should be marketing as Baka burgers. Yeah. Here's why. And show the seal and blah, 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 whatever, yeah. Oh, that. Um, I hope the Baca burger is better than their. Um, well, the chili was bland, chili, yeah. bland, 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 watery and bland. If you took a normal chili yeah. and cut it half and half with hot water, that's about what it would be like. Oh, you know, nothing. nothing. You couldn't even tell what kind of meat it was. So. Oh man! I was kind of excited. Something different for lunch. Yeah. Wow. And then it was no. hot water with meat and vegetables. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it eventually has a few beans floating in it. Uh -huh. It's actually funny that you mentioned chili because for the first time in months, I actually made chili this morning to, I put it into the slow cooker so it'll be ready for dinner tonight. Oh, I didn't bring it for lunch. No. Oh, Cameron! <laughs> Bunch of meat and to me, onions chili, and tomato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe when beans. you get in the bowl, if you put a spoon in, the spoon would basically stand up by yes. itself, you know? <laughs> yeah, it should be thick. <laughs> I've never seen anywhere in Japan selling chili, so... It's, it's usually surprising. called chili beans. Okay, chili beans. They don't beans. call chili con carne, it's called chili okay. beans. Even though it's got meat in, they don't know what the word carne means. Yeah. So they call chili beans. Huh. And it's usually bland, of course, because you know, yeah. Japan is not the spiciest food country in the yeah. world. So. Yeah. Can you get chili powder out there easily? Yes, at grocery stores they sell it. No, I don't know any, what any, people any, use it for, though. <laughs> if they aren't making well, chili no, no, no. or Mexican any, food. Any, or... Any restaurant will have Tabasco sauce in, in available if it's more on the table, but it'll be there. Mm -hmm. I see any restaurant, I mean, you know, yeah, lots of places. Yeah. I've seen people put it on their pizza and their pasta. So the place we go for lunch, yeah. yeah, they have Tabasco there, but mm -hmm. Kawaisan has to ask for it because yep. it's not on the table automatically. Right. Like that. It's there. And even their Tabasco isn't Tabasco brand Tabasco. I think it's more of a chili oil where it's, I don't know, maybe olive mm -hmm. oil or something mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. had red peppers soaking in it for a long time. Or, I don't know. But, but they're not surprised when Kawaisan asks for it. No. Tabasco, the girl quickly runs yeah. to get it. So it's not, it's not uh, outrage or something. Right. Cording Yami says there are plenty of extra spicy snacks these days over there. Um, wasabi spicy, I've seen. Um, well, there are different kinds of senbei, are, are, yeah. are, are different kinds of red and red pepper and uh, tomorashi. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those spices are known here. Yeah. Shishimi, there's a shop just at the yep. here, Shishimi shop. Yeah. Spices are known, and I think the same reason as most cultures. In the old days, it was the preservative value mm -hmm. of those things, I believe. Yeah. Togarashi is a big deal here. You know? Yeah, Togarashi is big on soba and udon mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. other dishes too. Oyakodon. Shop's been up and the shop's been down. It's yeah. been real swings here. Uh, there are many more Japanese customers, of course, as we knew this week. Yesterday, out of the three parties, two of them were totally Japanese people. Mm. The parties were fun. Shiba-san had fun. They had kids oh, okay. involved. But it was zero, zero shopping. Yeah, just party and then out of here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Party and out. And it takes huge amounts of time. Lots of questions. Mm. Shiba-san likes to answer questions, yes. though. Yeah, and especially with his kids. So, so, yeah. so she was in heaven yesterday. Yeah. But I was in the I was in minus. So it's okay. <laughs> Sorry, whatever. We can't. Every day can't. Yeah. And outside it was nice. Two days ago it was rainy. It wasn't so bad. But yesterday it was sunny. Mm -hmm. So the morning and the afternoon were just rivers of people going. Around. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it was a really nice day yesterday and today too. It seems. And last night, lots of drunks. It was really really nice night. noisy enough to wake me up. But unusual. Wow. I usually sleep through it, but uh, kids, high school kids, drunk high school kids, and stuff like that. Yeah.
I know Japan has those no under 20 stickers all over restaurants and stuff, but are they not as strict as the stickers might imply? It's really, how do you, how will you tell a high school kid from a college kid can't tell the difference? And even I say just not drunk high school kids, whatever, high school slash college yeah. slash kids, or whatever. Yeah. Not, not adult enough to be able to do it sensibly. You know, yeah. maybe, maybe it's their first time out, they yeah. probably 10 days off, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's okay, whatever, no big deal. Don't sound like a cranky old man. Yeah. It was pretty noisy last night. Quoting Yami's right, yes, some ramen shops also are very, very spicy. Mm -hmm. Isn't there one near us called Akakara, like red hot, yes, so, <laughs> red so, so, spicy, so, so. Yeah, basically? Yeah, yeah. It's a, that's Korean restaurant. Oh, yeah, okay. Saw one saw a video of a ramen place where the guys in the video didn't even take a sip of the broth. They were already drenched in sweat just by the smell. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they look unsafe to be consumed by human beings. <laughs> but again, that's a quote unquote Chinese food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's lots and lots of spicy water. Chinese food. and so Korean foods. Very spicy here. It's coming along, you know, after yeah. three or four more rows, it's actually really, yeah. you know, it doesn't. It's moving. Any given minute, it looks like nothing's happening, but we're moving along here. You know? Yeah. I've done three or four streams in a row with just this carving, and it does. I usually do about one column per day, it seems, somewhere yeah. on there. But unfortunately, the columns are getting longer, They're getting longer. as you oh, move no, they, that they way. They sort of lengthened out here. I think yeah. that's it. This is a, this octa that's the head of the octa. Oh, okay. so it's about so I okay. think I'm, I'm, I'm more than halfway now. I think yeah. we're about halfway. It doesn't matter. It's yeah. fucking long. We had a funny one yesterday. Yesterday, the day before, I can't remember exactly what it was. There was a Westerner in here. It was really quite busy. The shop yeah. was full, full, full. And I happened to be behind the counter, and he, mm -hmm. Nakamura -san was there, and he leaned forward to Nakamura -san. And the guy leaned forward and he said, I've been looking for a certain kind of print. I'm not sure if you have any. And he didn't want the other customers to hear. He said, I'm looking for sugar prints. <laughs> and I was like, you, know, you didn't have to whisper to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. I said, no, actually, we don't usually carry those because our market is more, you know, touristy and there's lots of kids here. So we don't, uh, we don't actually keep, keep them in stock. Keep yeah. prints, so so I, I started to recommend a couple of ways he could go downtown. Oh, uh, Yamada Shoten and Harashobo. So I've been there since now. They're running. Just kind of surprised because I thought maybe he just didn't ask about it. Really. Yeah. I don't know, they... And then I, I mentioned that the second thing. Well, if you have a friend who speaks Japanese, go on Yahoo auctions because every night there's lots and lots and lots yeah. of sugar prints. Literally every night. And he was curious about that, but he can't handle Japanese. And then just sort of. As a, as a, before he left, I mentioned one thing, you know, there is, I can't do it for you now, but we are actually going to be publishing a, a print in the Shunga genre. Yeah. And the, the calligraphy was on my desk, so I, I yeah. came over the calligraphy. And he said, wait, is that the, I said, look, so I pulled out the sample. the test said, that's yeah. the one I want, that's the that's one I want. The one I want. <laughs> <laughs> so we have one more person on the waiting list. <laughs> one, so, whatever, I told him, I can't help you, but come back. And I hesitate to say, come back a couple of months, come back yeah. a couple of years. I just don't say that anymore. Yeah, know, so. come back when it's ready. So I just said, <laughs> watch our social media and you'll see what's going on. So he took yeah. notes, Twitch, Twitter. He's probably watching this morning. Now. Yeah. Mm, that's funny. But from whispering over the counter, you know, do you have any? It's like, hey man, you got any dirty pictures? Yeah. I, guess, I guess in some sense that's what it is, you know, I yeah. suppose. So I don't know. Fly fish for fun. So I had sashimi at Narita on the way home one time, and the chef took great pleasure in giving me a pile of the craziest fresh wasabi I'd ever had. Wow. Uh, as an obvious, you know, a side trade plate, you mean, or dumping yeah. it inside the fish? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, oh, sashimi, I think they usually put it on the side, and you put mm. it on how, however much you sashimi, want. Sashimi, yeah. Sushi. Yeah. Yeah. You can get good fresh sashimi. It is strong. I mean, or the wasabi, I mean, wasabi is strong. Here's your nasal passage. Yep. Okay. 
set up a fireworks display for the final release of the Moku Hanka on Octopus Prince. <laughs> it's finally here! Fireworks go. Did you get more postcards? Is that what these had? Oh no, these have been here a while. No, they're damaged cases. There's some orders and stuff. It hasn't been, the box has been, ah, that reminds me of Soka, Soka. On the shipping and stuff, I know the post office is closed now. Close, yeah. close, close. We've been handling yes. that in the store, but I realize we haven't shut the website. We haven't put a note on the website. Uh, that because um, of the holiday, we can't ship and stuff. And then Omi, what's the Omi staff schedule? They're coming, I think it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So they're not going to be there every day, but, but they're going to be. can we ship? Is there a local post office closed? We have um, to drop off at Omi Honkyoku. Is that open? I anyway, we'll double check. They said they were going to look into it and, and tell me this yeah. week. And then let's adjust the website because we've okay. got to tell people you now. If anything yeah. ordered now can't be shipped for 10 days, we should tell people. Yeah. But I don't think it'll be that long. But I'll, I'll see what she said because okay. she said, I'm going to check and find out the deal and tell you anyway, next week. We should have done this last week because uh, yeah. we're into it now. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, I meant to talk to you last sounds week. Sounds like. They're planning to be there, like I said, not every day, but enough that they can still send us ship or er, prints when they're going yes, low on. as long as the post office can. Yeah. yeah. The tacky bin's running every day, that's okay. Yeah. Good morning. Oh, it's Evelyn Sam. Hello, hello, hello. It's How are you doing? Good morning, see Yeah. Hold the lock says, hey, is your shop in Asakusa? I went to the district yesterday and I can't find it. So I went to, did you use Google Maps? And he said, no. <laughs> Come find us. So we are here. Um, Hard to find. Yeah. There's We're not close the, to the Don Quixote. Yeah. So if you went over there. Um, We're not in the immediate tourist part of the temple. We don't want to be there. Yeah. Did... How you doing, madame? Okay. Yeah. Good. Hey Dave, how much, if ever, do you have to replace your sharpening tools? And if so, where do you get them? Replace my sharpening tools? You mean, you mean the stones? Yeah, those last pretty much yeah, indefinitely. Well, this the, nowadays I'm using two steel stones. We've talked about some of the I have no experience with replacing that because they really seem to be lasting forever. I don't know. Yeah. If they're going to last my lifetime, I don't know. I don't know. There's nothing, I don't know traditional or, or special about them at all. When I was using natural stones, mm -hmm. they did. They wore out really quite quickly. Because okay. you know, as you grind, as you, as you sharpen the metal, you're also yeah. binding away the stones. So yeah. They have a limited lifespan, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it was every, whatever, every couple of years. And this, I went to a certain stone shop. It's, it's in Asakusa. Oh. It's closed now. It's over in Tawaramachi. And the shutter's been closed now for well over a decade. No and well. Granddad must have died, and uh, whatever. But uh, I have no s s really detailed requirements for sharpening stones. We, again, we talked about this yesterday while I was sharpening. Because my chisels are so small in surface area, metal cuts really easily. Yeah. And basically any sharpening stone, I could probably use sandpaper on my tabletop or something. <laughs> and, no, really, and it would work. Yeah. Uh, it's easy for us because the area, the physical area of metal to be cut away is so, is so small. Mm -hmm. And also because was, I don't really need to go scary sharp. I mean, we chatted about this yesterday too. Yeah. I, I broke it and sharpened it a couple of times yesterday. If we go too sharp here, it's pointless because the minute I put it in the hard cherry wood, it just breaks off the edge of the, the blade yeah. right away. So we go sharp in yeah. as a general word, but we don't go scary sharp. Yeah. So sharpening is easy for us. There's no you know, magical, wonderful tools that are only available from one specific shop at a certain time of day, you know, whatever, you know. Yeah. Any generic sharpening tools will work fine. Okay. Hold the locks saying, oh, I missed it. I missed out on an opportunity. I have to take the Shinkansen in two hours to Kyoto, so, so I won't be able to make it to oh, the Hankan. I'm going to yeah. cry. <laughs> I'll be back in a few years.
No, no, you also saw the Japanese boy who has the printmaking workshop across the river here right. in Tokyo. He's open to foreigners, he does some teaching and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, on his Facebook a while ago, he linked a new sharpening uh, product. And it was like this steel stone that we use. But rather than being like a quarter inch thick piece of steel with the stuff on the top, it yeah. was just basically the top layer. Huh. On some kind of thin, flexible thing. And it was really quite cheap. And what you needed to do was you needed a flat base yeah. that was stable. And you put that thin layer on the base, and then what you seem to have now is bang, you've got a steel stone like this. Yeah. And you did your water and your sharpening on top of it, and mm. then just put it away. Yeah. And he had uh, six or seven of these. He showed them on his blog, fanned them out, uh, 100, 400, 800, 1200, whatever, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And they were much less expensive than this actual physical huge chunk of steel. Interesting. But they needed to be used on a solid flat base because they it. themselves didn't have any structural strength. Hmm. And that was an interesting product. Yeah. It's kind of a sharpening stone, stone sandpaper. Yeah. I don't think they were designed to be used, like rolled up and, and used as sandpaper. Yeah. I don't know what they were called. It was all uh, oh, he was posting all in Japanese, explaining a new Japanese product. But, yeah. But that also was interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Because these, these steel stones are fairly expensive, and it's a dressed chunk of steel, you know. Yeah. And it's also heavy to ship. And, you know, mm hmm But once you have it, you have it forever, basically. I guess. Again, it's outside of my experience. I don't know. Yeah. This thing could be wearing out and getting lead, uh, softer and softer without mm -hmm. me noticing it, because, right. you know, it's such a gradual, slow change. Yeah. So it's quite possible that if I got a new... 400 stones side by side. Oh my god, mine's really worn out, but I didn't notice it. Yeah. At the moment, they're still totally, absolutely functional, so mm -hmm. I keep using them. Yeah. It could be that at some point next year I'll think, gee, you know, it, is, it seems to be taking longer to do this. I wonder if it's getting old. Yeah. At that point, I'll try some new ones. Okay. May I ask how much is fairly expensive for a stone like I this? don't remember what I paid, I'm sorry. Okay. I don't remember at all. It wasn't sort of dirt cheap, but it wasn't, oh my God, can I afford yeah. that? It was just, just buy it. You know? yeah. I really don't know. They're available everywhere, all over the world. This is not yeah. you know, exclusive or exotic stuff. It's a generic product now. I'm very, very happy with it. I don't feel I'm compromising my work. It's using a you know non-traditional product. You know? Yeah. Fly fish for fun. The nice thing about the diamond steel plate is that even when worn out, you can continue to use them to true or flatten natural stones. I don't know much about that. Well, I guess so, as long as it's flat, I mean, that would be the yeah. key point there. So, you know. mm -hmm. so I guess even when the grit is not as strong as it used to be, you still do have a flat object. Yeah. And that's what's not the case with the stones. Yeah. You're losing your grit and you're losing your flatness at the same time. Got it. See you, Karen. She said she's headed out. Oh, Karen, Karen. Okay. Yep. So, so, so. Everyone's already saying bye, Karen, so her, her identity is out, I guess. <laughs> she didn't mention how she got her paper yet? Or? Oh, I don't know. I sent the tracking number. What's on your plan this morning, sir? It is headed to end prep and stuff yep. like that. And uh, gonna follow up on people we haven't heard from for a while in the subscription series. And so since we're right at the end of the month, but before creating the new bills, so hope yeah. we can catch up on some of those people and maybe take a picture of the Baca burgers. <laughs> Morning. Uh, are also to the month and step forward stuff. They yep. Thank you, son. We post office download and um, yep. I think we were almost didn't make it last month with the 
trying to... On our print party reservation blank pages. Oh, yes. Was, I've already was, done it and okay. put in the bookings. I, it was yep. minutes before something. Yeah. I can't remember. So I, I, uh, I it's done. <laughs> I got that one done early. Sometime last week. Was that last month or two months ago? I forget it. Yeah. We almost didn't make it. I said, right. did Cameron forget it? Whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I think it happened over a weekend and I just wasn't thinking about it. But, but it's done this time. Okay. So what is it? It's now April, May, June, July's reservations. July is open and July's reservations are in the system. Also, too, I know we, our string is broken. Which string? I'm a string of print parties with bookings. New oh, bookings. okay. Six weeks. We sold out the print parties on Saturday. What day was today? Today is Monday. Monday. It was Saturday it was morning. Saturday morning. 10 o'clock. So it never got full. No, it didn't even have anybody. Wow. It was totally open. So it's a black mark yeah. on our calendar page. <laughs> Six week string is broken. Oh, man. Of being sold out print parties. Wow. That is wild. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. And nobody came for that one. So we were standing here for for ticking down to 10 o'clock. Yeah. Like, no, somebody, we're going to go outside and yeah. grab somebody off the street. you got to come and get, join this party. Okay, we like this. And go yell like the, our neighbors. Kirisan, Kirisan. Maybe Cameron, too. Uh-oh. <laughs> we, we had real trouble yesterday. We oh no, this this Saturday morning when we had no print party. I had three staff here. Oh, okay. What to do? Let's do some print packing. Yeah. We went up there, got Shimizu San's prints there. Mm -hmm. And the small ones we pack them the normal way with the little corners. The yeah. big ones are really thick paper. We need the pitak corners. Uh -huh. The ones in the pink box. Yeah. Um, the really big triangles. Where right? are they? I've never seen them. I don't know where they're from. <laughs> Please, if you can find them, if you can find because we spent okay. hours, three oh, of us, no. cannot find them anywhere. Uh, and I tried to order on Amazon, yeah. and I can't even find them on Amazon. In our, in our history or anything. Couldn't find it anywhere. No, I bought them myself from Uematsu uh, when I was looking for something yeah. else. I picked them off off the shelf and yeah. bought them. Oh, no. And we, I looked in there, yeah. twice I looked in there, she was on looked in there, we looked in your room, we looked everywhere. We finally out? Find them. So we didn't have to use a sense print. Okay. No, they're not out. We had lots, lots oh, of okay. packages, nowhere near full, and nowhere near empty. Yeah. If I weren't familiar with Japanese at all, this would look like Sanskrit on old stone tablets. Where were they? They were in the box with all the other corners. No, I looked in it. We all looked, it. <laughs> we all looked in it. This is not just me making this Three up. Three people, they're like... The, 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 when you pull the drawer, the bottom yeah. left corner, there's huh? some rolls in there and there's some box stuff, the, the other box. The box in front of that, so further to the back, yeah. it was there. The box uh, further to the it's back. It's got all the tape in it. Okay, um, well, we have all, all of us. <laughs> so it's not just me making this up. She just brought them in her backpack. Yeah, I, I took them home. They were in my bag the entire time. <laughs> Well, I'm glad they're here. <laughs> okay, while we're at it, can you give that to Cameron for reordering a yeah. box and put it into your system? Because I couldn't okay. find them yeah. on Amazon okay. at all. Let's see if I can find it somewhere else. But also, we didn't know how to spell it, so we were just trying. Yeah. It was just me, me and me and Makamunisa. We tried this spelling, that spelling. She says, are you sure they're called Pitak? I could, could be Pitak, Pitak, Pitak. We don't know what it's called. Pitak. Pitak. Interesting. Oh, and they're by Muse, the same people who make our paper. Oh, so, didn't know that. Yeah. Or not paper, but the those backing boards. So that's good. We already have a relationship with that company. Maybe they'll sell them to us directly. I think so. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, good morning. Oh, those are, hello, hello. Is it that time that Cameron said people are here? It's 9 20, crowded. everyone's a little early. Yeah, <laughs> the trains, the Golden Week. Oh, uh, Sunday schedule, because oh, yeah. it's Sunday schedule. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and everything is empty. It was, yeah. I was surprised. I, I rode in on my bicycle and saw the bike parking lot is yeah. empty. Like, so yeah, pretty much a thing is, desert. An hour or two hours later, when it comes 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, shop yeah. opening times, that's yep. when the trains are going to start to load up. Right. But, so it's not salary then, but. Uh, yeah. But choppers. Instead of selling them in students, the normal morning train crowd. Yeah. Oh. 
now they're talking about diamond sharpening stones. Interesting. Have you ever used those? Is that that's not what these are, right? Diamond sharpening stones. Oh, there. Okay. Of course, it's diamond. Some kind of diamond dust. Oh, okay. Coated onto, onto it. Onto okay. Steel oh stone. yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't have any other knowledge beyond what I've already mentioned. Okay. So it should be used wet with water or a bit of washing soap or well, even it. Windex. There's, Interesting. There's no idea. So I put, I do, I put my usual water and I put my slurry on it. Mm -hmm. and every time I do, not every time, but sometimes people say, Dave, you don't need to do it. You can just use it dry with your steel. You yeah. Know, and maybe okay, but I don't feel comfortable with that. So. Yeah. Interesting. So definitely no oil though. It <laughs> should be stored dry. Yep. That's what you do. So, and I do have to wipe it off because they get rusty. Absolutely, they get rusty yeah. quickly. But no oil? Well, what would be the problem with using oil on those? And are people that are doing the Western oil sharpening, yeah. what would be the problem though? Does well, it just clog it too much? Or? I don't know. It is surprisingly heavy for how they small so, a piece so, this so, is. Exactly. So, they are lots of weather. Yeah. yeah. Literally, if I'm at the desk, if we got somebody here, if I hug that at somebody, I mean, you could, you could kill somebody. Yeah. Somebody else, so. Serious piece of hardware. Mm. This is Doi Zan. He comes and the first thing he does, he counts all the Doi hunger prints, how yes. many we're doing, because we're really proud of how well we're doing for those guys. Doi hunger? Mata uimashite. So, this is the... Record, right? Record? Yeah. Ah, so really good, good, good. good. So, okay, so they're really happy, are they? Yeah. Happy, very happy. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. What about the introduction to the guy in San Francisco? Is that working forward, uh, you know, no, or you're, no, you're out of the... Yeah, anyway, I just... Introduced, that, okay. Yeah. Right. So far, they, uh, they have no you know, software engineer, so they mm. with some parts, mm. so maybe it's okay. Yeah. Good morning, Kawai-san. Full stack today. Yeah, but the, the party is me and Kawai san for parties. So the last oh, couple okay. of days I didn't do any parties because uh, we had three veterans. It was Kawai san, Shiba san, oh, yes. uh, Nakamura san, and uh, I forget one. Yeah. So I didn't do parties but today. It's me and Kawai san, so we have to yeah, do it today. Oil is more viscous than water, it's thick, so the primary concern is diamond stones aren't porous enough and the oil layer so interferes so with the contact of the blade. Uh -huh. Interesting. But but I use it with water, yeah. certainly they're not porous to water, Yeah. and I can feel the cutting, I can feel the abrasiveness yeah. of water on the slurry, mm -hmm. so... No, not to argue, I don't know about that. Interesting. So I guess in a western oil stone, then the oil seeps down into the surface of the stone, I guess that's yeah. what I'm hmm. So it's actually a lubricant in that sense then. Yeah. yeah. Finish this 1010 and then just maybe shut her off. So I've got to get to the party room there. I'm going to do here this morning. Yeah. This being Monday, this is it. This is the last stream of David's week, which ends Mondays. Yeah. Tuesday, we're theoretically closed. We will probably be here if the crowds are out there. Yeah. But there will be no stream tomorrow. And then Wednesday, we should be back, I think, on a normal stream. Yeah. When's the new era start? What's the date? That's Wednesday? I think Wednesday. May. First. Is that Wednesday? Wednesday. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So the new year starts. So I have to make my decision on the thing we were talking about yeah. the other day. Talk about that. Okay, there we go. Good, good. It's fun nice. I got lots of work done today. Good, good, good. Bit of chat, a lot of work. Yep. Very nice. Thank you again for joining us again. I'll be back here Wednesday. 48 hours from now, or 40, yeah. 46 and a half hours from now. 46 and a half hours Wednesday from now. Morning. Yeah. Back with us. Yeah. With another, we'll just be continuing, as far as I can see, just be continuing this work. There are 
There's another copy job coming. Aoyama san gave me the blocks All right. for the next party print. Yes, yes, yes. All right. but, but I don't See have it. the sketch. Oh, okay. Yet, yet, so I doubt I'll be ready in time for Wednesday. So. Okay. Got it. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. See you in a couple of days. Bye bye. See you later.